Trustees, uh, for a public hearing regarding the permissive motor vehicle license tax, it is uh, February 11th, about uh, 5 o'clock p.m. Uh, Mr. Burning, may we please have the roll call? Yes, Ms. Davis? Present. Mr. Burning? Present. Mr. Honolaw? Present. All the trustees are present. Um, I would uh, ask that everyone please stand and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, Mr. Gilbert, if I can uh, turn the agenda over to you, please. Thank you, Mr. Hunter Law. Um, as indicated, obviously, this is a public hearing, a statutorily required public hearing um, prior to the board actually uh, considering the adoption of a resolution to uh, institute uh, the additional $5 motor vehicle license fee that was permitted most recently by House Bill 62 last year by the state legislature. I, I think it bears explanation regarding maybe why the state had authorized that additional $5 fee and maybe explain exactly what fees are currently in place regarding vehicle registrations and, and where that money currently flows to. As many in the audience and obviously the board is aware, back uh, seven, eight years ago, the state legislature took drastic cuts um, to local government's revenue sources, namely the estate tax and the local government fund. Um, Regardless of how you feel about those two sources of revenue, they were undoubtedly important for not only Springfield Township operations, but local government oper operations across the state. Essentially what it amounted to was a tax shift from the state to the local level. So... Other way around. Well, no, they actually, they, they, they cut revenue from us well, to balance did. their budget. They did. And instead of raising taxes at the state level, they forced our hand here to make up for that lost revenue. That's true. So in, in essence, it, to the township, it was almost a two and a half million dollar hit. And in some years, three million dollars because the state tax was a little volatile, went up and down. In, in response to that, for many years, the state did nothing. Most recently last year, understanding that a lot of the revenue that they cut was being utilized for road repair at the local level they decided to, instead of restoring the local government fund to the level it was prior to their cuts, they haven't returned any of that revenue. They simply said, we're going to give you an additional option to raise revenue at the local level to pay for road repair, which is where we are today, and which was the, which was the, the impetus for House Bill 62 and allowing the additional $5 fee. When you, when you apply for a vehicle registration in the state of Ohio, there are several different fees that are associated with that, with that fee. And if you're like me, you typically don't look at every little fee that's associated with the $62 or whatever it is that when you get your new sticker every year. There, there are fees that are imposed at the state level. And that $5 fee that's imposed at the state level, 5% of that $5 fee that's imposed by the state, 5% of that gets put into a pot that is then disseminated amongst all 1,300 plus townships in the state of Ohio based on a formula of how many road miles does the township have, how many actually streets does the township have. So with that being said, it amounts to about $37,000 a year to Springfield Township that we get from whatever the state has implemented many, many, many years ago. In addition to that, the county currently has a $5 fee of which 30% gets put into a pot and then disseminated to townships throughout Hamilton County, which amounts uh, to roughly $102,000 a year to Springfield Township. And then the township itself already has a $5 motor vehicle license fee that we, we derive 100% of the benefits from, which amounts to a little over $180,000 a year. Now, it, it, it isn't a terrible amount of money when you consider the cost of road repair. And 
some may say, well, what are you doing with that money? Well, we are exactly doing that. We are using, using that to fund road repair. In addition, we have one road levy that was passed back in 1997, one mill road levy, which is the only dedicated source of revenue for roads other than what I've described that is prescribed, that is used for road repair and dedicated and it can only be used for road repair. It generates about a half million dollars a year. In 1997, it costs about $478,000 a year to pave one mile of road. Today, that one mill levy still generates half a million dollars a year. Today, the cost of repaving one mile of road is just shy of a million. So what that basically says is that we can do far less with the same amount of money that we generated back in 1997. So what have we done since then? And why are we here tonight considering the additional $5 fee? A couple of things. One, we went through a, a, a process of adopting a JEDGE, which at the time we indicated that that JEDGE revenue uh, would be utilized for road repair, uh, or at least a portion of it would be utilized for road repair. Now, I was at every meeting we ever had. I don't think we ever said that 100% of the JEDGE revenue would be utilized for road repair because that factually couldn't be correct. Because back when, before, prior to the estate cuts, state tax cuts, and before the local government fund cuts, we still had issues funding road repair. We just couldn't keep up with the demand of road repair given the amount of revenue that we had dedicated for that, which is why we had three unsuccessful attempts at a road levy. That was prior to the state cuts. So just because we passed the JEDS and we were able to fill a good portion of the cuts that were generated by the state, we still have a road repair funding issue. Now, through some operational changes that the board has, 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 has asked for and, and has pushed for, we have reduced the operational impact that the administrative uh, department has on the general fund. So what does that mean in non-government speak? Essentially, it means that we've been able to reduce expenditures so that we can funnel more of that JEDGE revenue toward road repair. So since 2015, we've spent $2.7 million of road district, of that one mill road levy that's generated $500,000 a year, we've spent $2.7 million toward actual road repair. Now, there are other things that we utilize the revenue for, such as curbs and storm sewers and things of that nature, but this is purely toward road repair. The JED funding, which is, I think, most people are saying, well, what are you doing with that money? Almost $3 million since 2015 has been put toward road repair out of the JED revenue. So we're doing exactly what we said we would do. Additionally, we've received a little over $3 million in grant funding to put toward road repair. I'm happy to report that we've received a, an additional, how much was it, almost half a million dollars this year in 2020. And in 2021, we're expected to receive $2 million in grant funding. Well, why is that important? Because we can leverage our dollars and get two for one with the grant funding. So with the, the current motor vehicle license fees with the current judge revenue in the road district in addition to the process that we've instituted and that was recommended by the 60 member plus resident committee neighborhood master plan steering committee we've instituted the assessment process where when we come into a neighborhood a portion of the cost of repairing a road is done through assessment so the existing dollars you pay the mvl fee and the road district tax and the JEDGE revenue is put toward funding half of the cost of the road repair. And in some cases, depending on the level of, of, of rehabilitation needed, significantly more than 50%. And then another portion is being made up by the assessment process. To date, we've done how many neighborhoods? 15? 15 different neighborhoods, and they have all, oh, you know, I would say almost unanimously passed the assessment process to get their road done. Why is the assessment process, and I, I know this isn't what this meeting's for, however, I think context is important to provide the entire picture. The assessment process, we have to front all the money up front. It then gets paid back over a period of years, so half the cost in some cases, and in some cases only 10% of the cost, if it was a 100% rehabilitation, gets paid back over a period of time. But however, the township, through the revenue generated from the taxes you pay and the MVL fees, 
the other half is made up by the assessment, but at the beginning, 100% of it is paid for by the township because we have to pay for it up front and get it back over time. That allows us to create a rolling fund to try and keep up with the demand of road repair. We have about a $40 million problem in Springfield Township. To make every street in good condition, if we were to go out tomorrow and fix every street and make it in good condition, it would be about $40 million. Right now, we have between $1.5 and $2 million a year to put toward road repair. is isn't gonna get us very far. So how do we look at providing additional revenue to do what we refer to as pavement preservation projects. So basically trying to get to a street and making some repairs before it gets so bad that we have to completely dig up the entire street and redo it. It's eight times more expensive if we let a street get into complete disrepair than fixing it when it needs to be fixed. The additional $5 MVL fee, which will generate another $200,000 a year, will be used for that very purpose. It will be used for us to go into areas that don't need a complete rehabilitation, but there are sections of a road that we can cut out and repair and or go to a street that has been recently repaired and use a sealing technique or a, a pavement preservation technique to make that last even longer. So that's what this additional revenue would be used for. And we looked at ways that would be the most fair and we can't find a better mechanism than saying the individuals that actually have cars and that actually use the streets, how better way to fund those necessary repairs than through that process, as opposed to in another property tax. The goal here is to never have to consider a road repair property tax on the prop for road repair. The reason being is because the way the township is set up as an a la carte government, we have specific levies for police and fire. Not to mention what the school district is knocking on your door every day for. We want to limit the amount of times we have to come out to residents and ask for property tax levies. And if we can eliminate the need for road repair as a property tax levy, that only helps because police and fire are, are, are dependent upon property taxes. And if we can eliminate competition for those property tax dollars for police and fire and find alternative sources of revenue to fund our road repairs, that's what we've been doing. So what has been the accomplishment of that money that we've spent and that the process that we've implemented? Since 2015, we've repaired and brought into good condition 97 of the township's 400 roads. So a quarter of the township streets have been brought to good condition in basically the last five years. That's probably 10 times more than we did in the 10 years previous. And that's simply because of the mechanisms we put in place, be it the JEDGE revenue funneled toward road repair, the assessment process, as well as the methodology that we're gonna go in and fix streets that are in need of minor repair before they are in need of complete rehabilitation. We use the analogy that let's fix the hole in the roof before we need to put on a whole new roof because it's much more expensive at that point. So we're, what we're doing is working. The numbers don't lie. The fact of the matter is, is the additional $180,000 to $200,000 generated by this uh, additional $5 motor vehicle license fee going to allow us to make up that $40 million hole? No, it isn't. And will we continue to do the things that we're doing without it? Sure. Does it help? And is it probably the most equitable and fair way to bring in additional revenue to push the envelope a little further? Yes, it is, which is why the board's considering. Just one thing to mention, just so you guys understand how hard we're working to try to get as many roads done as possible. Two quick points. One is to do those 97 roads that Chris talked about we spent $9 million on roads in the last few years with a half a million dollar road levy. We've been able to, between grants and Jed's money and so forth, we spent almost $9 million to get 97 roads to good condition. The other thing I want to mention that you probably don't all know is that for this year, most of the 
grant funding that we talked about comes from a state fund and it's called a skip grant. This year, Hamilton County was allotted a little over $3 million in grant money for the entire county, including the city of Cincinnati, every municipality. There's 46 di different municipalities in the county. Of the $3.1 million that was allocated in Hamilton County, we were able to get a million dollars of that money, over 30%, which is pretty incredible. The hard work of Mike Gould and his staff and other people were able to do that for us for this year. And for next year, there was about $10 million, Mike, in grant money. And we were able to get $2 million out of the $10 million for the entire county. So there, there's 47 GIF jurisdictions competing for it. So last year, we got over 30% of the money that was allocated to Hamilton County just for Springfield Township. And this year, we were able to get 20% of the money for the entire county. So it's not like we're coming out and asking you guys, hey, we, you got to fix this big problem that we have. We're trying to find other ways to do it. And that's why we've worked so hard to get the grant money, which helped obviously immensely over the last six years. And then we're also doing things like the uh, program where we go to a neighborhood and say, hey, we can fix your roads, but it's going to cost you $80 a year for eight years or 10 years or whatever. But your road will get done this year. And like Chris said, I don't, I don't, he didn't probably explain the whole thing, but we've had over 90% of the people that have voted, you know, whether to do that or not, they absolutely are all for it every time because they know their road's going to be fixed and it's going to cost them 80, 80 bucks a year for either eight or 10. It, might, it varies, but less than $100 a year. And that's where we've been able to do all the uh, projects that Mike talked about. So. We're doing a lot of things. It's not just, you know, hey, we're going to come and get a $5 motor vehicle tax. There's a lot of things going into trying to fix this problem. And, you know, we're obviously trying to use whatever options we can. Since the state cut the local government funds to balance their budget, this is one of the few things they've given us back. They won't give us back. They keep saying they might give us back some local government funds, but we haven't seen them yet. So. They cut them twice, actually. They cut them a big first time. John Kasich cut them big time, and then he cut them again so that he could claim, hey, look, i got a balanced budget and a $2 billion surplus. Ain't I the greatest? Meanwhile, every community in the country or in the state of Ohio has suffered because of it. So, sorry, Chris. No, you're, you're fine. I mean, you're, you're exactly right. So that, that essentially is what brought us here to where we are tonight. Um, and I think obviously the board and I would be happy to answer well, any questions you would have. But I think well, no, I, I think the purpose of this though is to hear from you. Right. And so if there are people here this evening who would like to address the board on this issue, um, you know, please come forward, state your name and address um, at the podium, and uh, we'd like to hear what you have to say. Um, and we'd ask that everybody else remain quiet and listen to uh, to anybody who would like to speak. Um, and this is something that we're not going to be making a decision on uh, this evening. There is another hearing that is next week. scheduled next week for same same process. People from the public can come and uh, uh, give us their comments, and then the board will make a decision after that. Some of you do look like you might have questions, so feel free to come up and yes. My name's Kate Giver, and I live at 8420 Gamma Court. And um, we had our road repaired, and we're, we're very glad to have it done, and I understand the need for it. Just a couple things. One is, this looks like a very broad scope that this money can go to. It's not just road repairs. There were other things like sig traffic signals and buildings, and, and I, it, it just seems like a very broad scope to me. So if it were for roads, then I guess I wouldn't mind paying five bucks extra for my car. Right. Um, and I guess the other question I had was, um, y you know, they raised the, the Ohio State, the gas tax in Ohio, yeah. and that was for road repairs too, I believe. And I was wondering what kind of money we get from that. Okay. I, 
well, if I can answer those questions, yeah. if the board doesn't mind, in sort of in sequential order. The first question, you're right. The, the enabling legislation that the state passed allowed it more broadly beyond just roads. You're exactly right. And that's because historically, that's what that particular fee has been allowed to be used for. However, what I would argue that, not argue, but specify is that, one, do we even, do we have any signals we maintain? Springfield Times doesn't have any signals we maintain. There's a maintained by the county, so it wouldn't be used for that. And then from a building's perspective, yes, but only buildings that are utilized for public works department that are the ones that actually do the road repair. So we, we, we have other means to deal with building repair. So I think, not to speak out of turn here, but I think we can commit any new revenue from this additional $5 fee will be dedicated 100% toward road repair because that's the need. Um, and, then, and then secondly, uh, regarding the gas tax, you're right. And the township received a little over $300,000 last year in 2019 from the gas tax. The, the increase in the gas tax we're estimating will bring in, well, and actually, historically, it brought in about a little over 200000 but the reason it's 300000 because we had half the year of last year with the gas tax increase, or a little less than half the year. So we expect this year to bring in about three fifty, so about another hundred fifty thousand dollars in revenue from the gas tax. Again, it isn't it isn't something that we can predict with any certainty because it's it's sort of a commodity type op, you know product that it just depends on how many people buy gas in two thousand twenty, and, and with the the invent of of electric vehicles as well as the 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 better gas mileage we're all getting now in new vehicles, I don't see that really going up. So we did get a small increase from the gas tax. And again, that revenue is funneled toward road repair operations as well. So that's, those are the sources of revenue that we've 100% dedicated toward road repair. And just one more question. Yes, ma'am. Um, you had talked about the, the one mill, the road, the levy, the road levy, that yes. it brings in like, what, a half a million dollars? Right. Yeah. And is that based on the value of the homes? Yeah, what happens with property taxes is you know, I'm, I'm going to contradict myself here, but so I'm prefacing it, so just stay with me. When you pass a levy, if, if the year which was passed in 1997, that one mill levy was assessed against the value of homes in 1997, and it generated a half million dollars a year. Forever and as long as that levy is in existence, it cannot generate more than a half million dollars a year. So it's always levied against that amount. Okay, so the now, value it doesn't fluctuate value. with new appraised values for residential. Okay. For commercial, it will. But we don't have a lot of commercial in Springfield Township, so we don't really see big blips in mm -hmm. terms of revenue there. So it, it generally, when we pass a tax, it generally stays flat for the life of that tax. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. thank you. Hi, my name is Tim Oliver, 841 Red Mill Drive. Uh, so two things, uh, two questions. How, what are the projections for the new tax then? Mm -hmm. You think it's $5 or something sure. like that? Yeah. What, are, what, are, what, what is the amount that you project will, will be the income based on that? Okay. The only thing I can go off of is what we currently get for the current $5 that's in place, and it's $184,000 a year. So assuming that now there's another $5, I would guess... 300 and something. An, another 184 so a total of 360 Yeah. Now... Again, that's dictated by how many people register their vehicles. Are there going to be less vehicles, more vehicles, the same? But the amount that you needed to repair the roads was around $40 million. Yeah. That's to fix That's to fix them all at once. Yeah. yeah. We, which we can't do. We can't there's, do. There's no way the township could. We're just trying to do as much as we can. Okay. So how can I get my road fixed first? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Good. The uh, the amount that you said that's coming in from the state uh -huh. that is um, at, it's less now than it was, but it was like thirty percent. Now it's like twenty percent. Is that allocated one hundred percent to the road repairs, or th can that go anywhere? It, it's all toward road repair issues. So when when we say road repair, to to you that probably means one thing, and to us it can mean comp something completely different. Yeah, that can mean 
the curb, the storm sewer, the all those different things. Anything. So we we take that pot of money and we allocate as much as we possibly can toward the actual asphalt. But without the other stuff, the asphalt is useless. Right. So it's a balancing act. And, and But what I can tell you is our issue right now is the asphalt, meaning affording to pave road miles. So again, without speaking out of turn, and the board may chastise me later for this, I, I can assure you that the additional one hundred eighty to $200,000 that would be generated by the $5 fee that we're discussing tonight, in addition to what's already in place, will be funneled 100% toward road repaving because that's what our greatest need is right now. And then the, that, right, oh yeah. That grant money, that 100% of that goes to the road because we never actually receive it. We get the grant and the state will pay whoever, we never, the money never comes through the township. Yeah, it goes directly, we take it in on our books, but we don't actually see it. So 100% of that goes to the road. It's paid directly to the contractor. Right, it's directly to whoever fixes it. So we never see that, but 100% of it goes to that road that, that we, and we bid those. We may not get them. You know, we've been very good. Mike's been very good at bidding these and getting them for us. Um, some, just, some communities don't get any skip money. So we're not guaranteed a percentage, just we've been good at getting yeah. our fair share or more. So the, the, how do you prioritize the road repairs? This is just the worst roads get, get it first. Well, kind of squeak with, with, with the skip methodology, and, and you know, I, I can, I'll let Mike explain, but in general, in order to even qualify for a skip grant, it has to be in pretty bad shape. So there, there's, a, there's a matrix, a scoring matrix that says, there's a lot of different components to that is, you know, condition, safety, all those kind of things. But we look at projects that are obviously in bad shape, but that also are maybe potentially contiguous to one another. So we can get in economies of scale with a contractor so they don't have to, you know, set up and start up in different, you know, we're 17 square miles. So you don't want them starting a project here and here. We've done that before, but it isn't ideal. So I don't know, Mike, if you want to jump in yeah. there. Mr. Gilbert's exactly right when it comes to the streets that are in horrible condition, the ones that would qualify for state capital improvement funding. When it comes to the pavement preservation projects, when we started down that path a few years ago, it really came down to traffic count. Um, when you have a $40 million problem, you're taking a look at what are the streets that are impacted the most by the number of cars that are traveling them. So we need to get those preserved and get them repaired, and then we kind of filter it down. We can talk more after this um, regarding Red Mill. Mill Clifford is a street that's on our radar. And Mike, just by the way, is Mike is our director of infrastructure and development, and and and, and I will say, and Dan did a good job of explaining it. These other communities that apply for these grant dollars, and I don't want to beat you over the head with this, but I think it's important to realize is that some of these other communities, most of them, actually hire a civil engineer to do their grant applications for them. That generally amounts to about ten percent of the grant award that they get. We do it in house. He does it. So not only are we getting more grant revenue than anyone else we're not having to pay an engineer to do it he does it in-house now i gotta tell everybody don't go leaving this meeting and be blabbing this all over we don't want these other communities mm. to figure out the secret no. of how to get their grants i don't funded. want them to steal mike away from us <laughs> Is, is there anyone else that would like to, uh, you know, comment, question, anything on this topic of roads? I have one question. Sure. I'm Allison Sigrid, 9077 Fontaine Blue Terrace. Yes. Um, the gentleman before me answered one of my questions. So my second question would be, why are these meetings held at 5 p.m. and not at a later date? Because I think we would have a higher turnout if the time for these meetings for Springfield Township was at a later time, say any time between 6.30 and 7.30? Well, to answer that directly, we used to have them at 6.30, and actually we had less people attend than we do when we start our meetings at 5 and 5.30. And, and that's because generally what we were told is that once they would go home after work, they would generally not leave the house again. They would rather stop by on their way home from the office or work or wherever they would be. So that's why we changed it, frankly. When was um, the last time you had a meeting at that time? 
seven, eight years ago, probably. Probably. Our, I, I regular, remember exactly when we changed our regular meetings start at 530. Um, the, um, this one, just because it was a special meeting required by law, we, you know, tacked it on the front end of the, you know, the time. Mm -hmm. We'll sometimes have people upset if we change, if we start changing our regular, you know, scheduled meeting time, you know, that sometimes gets people upset if they're, they think they're coming for something and it's not what they're. But we actually had them come on the wrong night before. Also. In, in actuality, though, we, we, we did used to have them later and, and we actually have more people now at our, at our meetings that happen at 530 than we did when they started at 630. And, you know, it's still and I, I argue it's still much later than what the county does. The county has theirs at one in the afternoon. OK, thank you. Mm -hmm. OK, thanks. Good question. Thank you. Anybody else would like to address the board? All right, well, it appears that there is not. Um, but I would like to thank everybody for coming out this evening. And yes, ma'am. Yes. Correct. Yes, yeah. we're, we're going to go in. We're going to close this public. Uh, the, the next thing we'll do here is close this public hearing, and then we will go into our regular scheduled township meeting, yeah. which actually is supposed to start about now. Do you want to take five, or are you good? Um, I'm fine, just keep going. Unless anybody, does anybody need to take a break? We have a motion to close the meeting. Yeah. Um, do we have a motion then to close this meeting? And as I said, the board won't take any action tonight. There's going to be another meeting next week. Um, should we announce the the uh, take the time of that? It, it would, the 18th at 5, right? Yeah. Uh, so February the 18th at 5 o'clock. So are you guys looking for a vote or a thumbs up? This is an announcement that there will be a second meeting um, on February the 18th at 5 o'clock. February the 19th. 19th, excuse me then. It's February the 19th um, at 5 o'clock. Uh, same thing to elicit uh, comment from the public. Uh, anybody that's, this, I see we're being televised. If anybody is at home, they don't want to come to a meeting, they can certainly call the township. 522-1410 uh, or send us an email, uh, you know, go on the township's website and uh, we will um, then after that meeting the board will consider this and decide whether or not it's something we, we need to do for the township. I can tell you the financial need is there. The um, state, some of the comments you heard tonight uh, are absolutely, it's, it's just the harsh reality. It's the truth of what the state of Ohio did to local governments. There was a, there was a mood in Columbus, they didn't, really, they didn't really care what happened to the local governments. They were gonna balance their budget, make up for all the, uh, expen all the spending they did, and they did it on the backs of local governments. You know why? Because it was the easy thing for them to do. And they basically said to the locals, you figure out how you're going to keep your, your uh, governments afloat. Uh, and so we had to do that. Um, but uh, we were lucky. Uh, the, the voters of Springfield Township passed a JEDS, which um, uh, basically allows us to continue in existence. There are some communities that sat back, didn't do anything, and now they're really, really hurting and regretting it. So... And, and what was the state's, when a lot of the local governments started passing JEDs, what was the state's uh, reaction? We'll outlaw them. We'll get rid of them. So now a lot of these communities that missed the window to pass one can't get one in effect. To, to answer your question directly, it was, it was the purpose is tonight to just take, take comment. The board will take all those into consideration to take an action. It doesn't require a vote. And... Um, if you want to obviously pledge your support, you absolutely can. Again, the board's taken all comments, objections in favor of, and they will use that in their deliberations to make a decision to implement or not the $5 fee. Bless the board. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for coming. We appreciate it we very much. that motion to adjourn? Let's, I don't think we've even, do we have a first? So we, have we have a so moved. Moved. Seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Meetings adjourned. Thank you all for coming. All right. Now.
Maybe we'll give just a minute for anybody that wants to leave.